Today I'm going to be making a video about my language school in Tokyo. It is a Japanese language school, meaning it is a school specifically for learning Japanese. And I thought you guys might be interested because I know that a lot of different people want to go to one and just want to know what it's like. So I'm going to be showing you the kinds of books we have, the kinds of things we learn, and just talk about my experience a little bit. There is some construction going on outside and there is just nothing I can do about it. It. I have to film this video now and we have no idea when they're gonna stop so um, I hope it's not too distracting. So when you start my language school they give you a little test to see what your level is. I did previously study Japanese. I studied it for one year and I have an A in GCSE Japanese but I like I don't think I learned anything at GCSE. I felt like I just wasted my time even studying, so that's why I do say that I'm a complete beginner, even though I did have like the absolute basics down. However, I did choose to take the elementary course to begin with because I wanted to make sure that I like I really had the basics down. I didn't want to jump straight into beginner one and figure out that actually I have no idea what I'm doing. So a lot of you are asking if you can start as an absolute beginner. Yes, you can start from zero because at the elementary course, the first thing they taught us was like hiragana and katakana, which by the way, you can learn yourself really easily. I did know hiragana and katakana when I started. So the course I'm taking is an afternoon course. I would have preferred the morning course, but the morning course was a faster moving one and I wanted to really make sure that I understand everything that's happening and I'm not getting lost. I was just a bit worried about ending up behind, so I did have to take the afternoon course. It is around 1 o'clock to around 5 o'clock Monday to Friday. So that's how long I study Japanese at school. And then I get homework after school. We have various kinds of homework. First of all, we have our homework book, which I'll show you. This is our homework book. And in here we have little pieces of homework like this where we answer question or change sentences and things like that. Then we also have online homework with video study. So usually that has a pre-quiz to check how much we knew before and then they give us a little video and then they give us some questions after. Usually it's more like a lesson recall so we pretty much just study what we studied during the lesson. It's just to make sure that we really understand it. And then we also have kanji. We currently have a kanji test every day. I'm in beginner 2 and that's when they started doing it. So it goes elementary, beginner 1, beginner 2, intermediate 1, intermediate 2, intermediate 3 maybe. So the next level is intermediate 1. But right now I'm in beginner 2 and we have a kanji test every day and I'm not trying to brag or anything but I get 100% in all of the tests. <laughs> now I actually find that uh, kanji is really rewarding. When you practice kanji you start to see it around and you start to recognize it and be able to read it and you f it, it feels really like you get so proud of yourself when you can read something that you couldn't read before. So I really enjoy uh, studying kanji. I'll show you what we used to study kanji. I want to say, my handwriting is bad in English, my handwriting was bad when I studied Kurdish, like the Arabic writing, and my handwriting is bad in Japanese. My handwriting is just bad. Like, my hand doesn't do the writing thing very well. It just doesn't. It, I will never have nice handwriting. So, if you see some of my writing and the writing is really ugly, it's like, it's not just Japanese, okay? I'm just bad at writing. So. Let's have a look. First of all, we have this book here. This is our beginner to kanji book. As you can see, Shokyuni kanji. And in here, we learn kanji through the little particles that makes up kanji, which if you study kanji, you'd know. So first of all, we studied all the basic kanji that makes up all the other kanji, if that makes sense. So we studied the kanji for like a woman and the kanji for rain and the kanji for speaking because those kanji become like small particles of other kanji. So the key to kanji is just learning to be able to put all the pieces together. So it's not necessarily as difficult as you would think. Like it's not like you have nothing to work with, but kanji has like two or three readings, sometimes more. You have to be able to remember all of them and remember combinations. So it is quite difficult, but it's very rewarding. So here you can see they use the kanji for gate and these are all the different kinds of kanji. Well, some of the kanji that you have that has the gate. And then here you have the kanji for thread. So they show you different kinds of kanji that use thread. They give you both of the readings. Oops, they give you um, both of the readings. 
Well, sometimes there's more than two, of course. So they give you kunyomi and onyomi, and then they give you like different combinations and how you say them and things like that. And then we also have this little notebook to practice kanji in. This is where you'll see my bad handwriting. So in here we just have the kanjis and we have some boxes so that we can practice writing the kanji. It's, uh, yeah, sorry, my handwriting really is bad. Um, it's a good way to just be able to write it over and over and be able to memorize it. Since kanji is my favorite subject, I actually study it in a little separate notebook. This is not my handwriting. I really wish my handwriting was like that. And in this book, I've just wrote kanji and ruined the pages with my bad handwriting. And then, let me show you the other books. We have this book here, it's just for practicing writing in these squares and whoops, and writing down and then you can pull, pull out the pages. So if we get writing homework, we usually write it in this. This is our kyokasho, which is just our, what's the English word? Like textbook. At our school, we are pretty much only allowed to speak Japanese, so um, you get used to calling things the Japanese name, so sometimes it's kind of difficult to remember things in English. We always call our textbook our kyokasho. In here we have just got this kind of stuff. Now to my bumpo. This thing is like heavy, you guys. This kills my back. But we have to bring it every day because it has like everything that we need in it. Let's see. In here we've got these little tags for the different things that we learn. So this is doshi, which means verbs. This is keioshi, which is a type of uh, is an adjective. And it just continues like that. So this is pretty much just where we put everything that we need to study and everything that we have studied. And also, bumbo just means grammar, I think. And in here we have these things which help us remember what we've studied in class. And they basically have these things where they explain how things work and we look through them and we write little sentences. It's basically just for us to be able to study what we studied in class, home alone, and to be able to make sure that we understand everything. And then we also learn various other things. For example, we learn manners and culture. And right now we're studying history which I'm just loving. I think this is so much fun. We study how to separate our garbage. We study what's polite to say and what's impolite to say. We study what kind of customs there are here and all kinds of things like that as well. All of the lessons are in Japanese fully and we are very discouraged from speaking any other language during lesson times. No one at the school is Japanese except for like the teachers, of course, and the people who work in the office. But the students are all foreigners from various countries all over the world. It's like all kinds of people. So each term lasts for about three months. So I had elementary for three months and then I had beginner one for three months and then I have beginner two for three months and it just continues like that. Usually every three months we change teachers but I had the same teacher for beginner one and elementary and then I had the same teacher for elementary and beginner two. You do get really close to your teachers. I'm like so in love with my teachers. We study speaking, listening, reading and writing, so it's like the whole lot. So as I previously mentioned, I picked my school through GoGo Go Nihon, which is just this website where they help you find schools and they help you with your visa and things like that. So if you have questions specifically about schools, where there are schools, how much schools cost, I'm going to put the link to GoGo Go Nihon in the bio and then you can just find it that way. So hopefully that's useful, it's just because um, it just depends entirely on your situation. So it's difficult for me to tell you how much things are going to cost and how much things are going to be if I don't know your situation. And I'm not exactly an expert, I only know how I did it. So please check the link if you're interested in that kind of stuff. I think that's pretty much it for this video. Please let me know other things that you would like me to make a video about and I will do my best to make them for you. Thank you very much for watching, please don't forget to hit like and subscribe. And and I'll see you soon. Bye.